If you know anything about the case involving Doomsday Cult mom, Lori Vallow and her former grave digger turned end of the world prophet husband, Chad Daybill, you've probably had a sneaking suspicion all along that they're both absolutely bonkers. I'm Chris, and this is True Crime Recaps. Now it's official. Lori was deemed unfit to participate in her trial. Apparently, Chad somehow passed his own mental fitness test, but Lori's long and winding road to justice will be postponed while she undergoes what the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare is calling restorative treatment for 90 days, which sounds a little more like a spa than an aggressive deprogramming she probably needs. In any case, the cult mom has long last been charged with the murder in the deaths of 16-year-old Tylee Ryan and 7-year-old J.J. Vallow, and a conspiracy to commit first-degree murder in the death of her fourth husband, Charles Vallow, has been filed with the Chandler, Arizona Prosecutor's Office. Chad is charged with the murder of Tylee and J.J., as well as his former wife, Tammy Daybell, plus insurance fraud. Finally, justice will be served, right? Well, not so fast. Just when we thought something could finally wipe that smirk off Lori's face, she was declared unfit to stand trial. However, despite the judge's ruling that Lori cannot make informed decisions about her treatment, he also stated she is not dangerously mentally ill. Now, we'd be willing to bet that Tylee, JJ, Tammy, and Charles might have a different opinion about how dangerous she is. All of these deaths were being planned months before they happened, according to the indictment. As early as July 2019, Chad and Lori were exchanging texts about death percentages for JJ and Tammy. Then, Chad and Alex got burner phones in September and October 2019. According to the indictment, Lori and Chad started texting each other that Tammy was in limbo and a zombie possessed by a spirit named Viola. And once you're labeled a zombie, you mysteriously disappear or die. According to Lori and Chad, JJ, Tylee, Tammy, and Charles were taken over by dark spirits, turning them into zombies. And they believe the only way to free a zombie's mortal soul is to kill their physical body. Now, that's a belief system that comes in pretty handy when hundreds of thousands of dollars in life insurance money is on the line. Take, for example, Chad's former wife, Tammy. For months, internet detectives have been saying that her sudden death was incredibly suspicious. And how's this for Shady? Chad told Lori, then Lori told her former best friend and fellow cult member, Melanie Gibb, and then Melanie told all of us via East Idaho News that Tammy Daybell was supposed to die in a car crash before Lori and the kids moved to Idaho to be with Chad in late August 2019. But as we know, Tammy didn't die until October 19th. Chad claimed she went to bed the night before with a terrible cough and never woke up. Keep in mind, she was only 49 with no health issues and she'd been training for a 5K in the weeks before her death. In most states, a suspicious home death like that would have warranted an official inquiry, but in Idaho, it's up to the family to decide if they want an autopsy. And isn't that a handy law if it happens to be a family member that caused the death? Three days after she died, Tammy was buried at the Evergreen Cemetery in Springville, Utah, the very same place where Chad used to work as a gravedigger. Idaho law enforcement did not think Tammy's death was suspicious until they got this call from Arizona law enforcement who had been busy connecting the dots between the July 11, 2019 death of Lori's former husband, Charles Vallow, and the October 2, 2019 attempted shooting of her ex-nephew-in-law, Brandon Bordeaux. As you can hear in this clip, they were also surprised to learn no autopsy had been done. The family did not want an autopsy, so they just went straight to the funeral home, and the family refused an autopsy. Um, and the family said they don't want an autopsy, therefore the coroner just signed off in and there, and then the funeral home took the state home. Is that how that works? Yes, that, that's pretty much how it works. On December 11th, around 6 in the morning, they exhumed Tammy's body. They did the autopsy the same day and she was buried again by 2.30 that afternoon. However, the results of that autopsy took a little more than a year to come back. Her actual cause of death hasn't been revealed, but at the end of May 2021, Chad was charged with first-degree murder in her death. So, 
we can assume it was far from the peaceful, natural death he claimed it was. Is it any surprise that he declined an autopsy at the time? Three weeks before Tammy died, Chad's former friend Julie Rowe told Inside Edition that Chad told her his plan couldn't move forward until Tammy was gone. Allegedly, he also told her that they were having money issues. Tammy was in charge of their finances and sort of ran Chad's publishing business. Julie said Chad wanted to quit because he had a bigger mission, but Tammy wanted to keep going. According to Julie, Chad said, I'm ready to get out now, and Tammy doesn't want to get out. When she passes, I'm done. I can't keep doing this. So what was Chad's big plan? To marry Lori Vallow so the two of them could lead the 144,000 and begin their mission of saving the earth from zombies? It probably didn't hurt that with Tammy gone, he could also collect about $430,000 from her life insurance policies, which Chad had increased to the maximum just a little over a month before she died. And speaking of very suspicious motives for murder, Melanie said Lori told her Lori was collecting money from Charles, Tylee, and JJ. According to the May 2021 indictment, in August 2019, Lori changed the deposit account for the Social Security benefits Tylee was getting from the death of her father, Joseph Ryan, a death authorities looked into recently but determined was actually from natural causes. But anyway, Lori switched the account so those funds were deposited in her personal account at a different bank. The last time Tylee was seen alive was at Yellowstone National Park on September 8, 2019 with her mother, JJ, and Uncle Alex. On that same day, Chad googled SSW wind, then visited a site to look up what is the definition of SSW wind direction. The answer, according to weather.com, is wind that is blowing from the south-southwest and thus is blowing towards north-northeast. Now, why would Chad be so interested in the direction of the wind? Possibly because Tylee's remains were found dismembered and burned beyond all recognition near Chad's fire pit in June 2020. But Lori never reported Tylee missing, nor did she contact the Social Security Administration to stop the benefits from being deposited every month. Yeah, sure, Lori's crazy. Crazy like a fox. JJ was last seen on September 24th. The language in the indictment says Alex Cox took possession of JJ on September 23rd. That jives with the statement Melanie Gibb gave. She was visiting Lori that weekend and saw Alex take JJ and carry him away, and it appeared that JJ was sleeping on his shoulder. The next morning, he was nowhere to be found, and Lori made sure to say that JJ had been acting like a zombie and crawling on top of the kitchen cabinets. His body was also found in Chad's backyard in June, wrapped in plastic and duct tape and buried deep with rocks and plywood covering his grave. Lori also chose not to report him missing or alert the Social Security office to stop sending monthly checks she was getting for his care. Now that Lori and Chad have finally been charged with murder and the suspicious deaths surrounding them, the question is, did they do it alone or did they command Alex or someone else to do it? As a reminder, Charles Vallow also reported being threatened by Lori multiple times before her brother Alex shot him in a very suspicious self-defense event in their former home in Arizona. Before his death, he reportedly told lawyers he was afraid of Lori and he changed his will to remove her as the beneficiary, something she didn't know about until after he was gone. In another court document, Charles claimed she told him she had an angel to help her dispose of his body. And just six months before her personal angel of death shot and killed him on July 11, 2019, she accused Charles of being a zombie possessed by a spirit named Ned Snyder. Now court documents are making it official. Alex Cox is named as a co-conspirator in all three deaths, but there seems to be further indication that there may be other suspected conspirators, both known and unknown. The indictment goes on to say that an attempt on Tammy's life was made 10 days before she died, on October 9, 2019. According to the indictment, Alex was in town going to the gun range and searching how to shoot through a Dodge Dakota before he put on a mask and shot at her. He missed, and Tammy, understandably totally freaked out by the experience, reported it to police and posted a message on a Facebook group saying, 
Something really weird just happened, and I want you to know so you can watch out. I had gotten home and parked in our front driveway. As I was getting stuff out of the back seat, a guy wearing a ski mask was suddenly standing by the back of my car with a paintball gun. He shot at me several times, although I don't think it was loaded. I yelled for Chad, and he ran off around the back of my house. The indictment further explains that Alex was in a church parking lot less than three miles from Chad's house on the night of October 18th. The night Tammy supposedly went to sleep with a cough and never woke up. It sounds like investigators believe Alex struck again, which makes us very curious to find out what the autopsy revealed about her actual cause of death. Alex is certainly shaping up to be the proverbial angel of death in the De Belvalo family. However, he's also indirectly the reason why the children's bodies were found and why the other murders are coming to light. After all, it was data from his cell phone that led police to the children's bodies buried in Chad Daybell's backyard. Then, Alex himself conveniently died on December 12, 2019, just a couple of weeks after Idaho police started questioning Chad and Lori about the kids' whereabouts. As a reminder, Chad and Lori skipped town and went to Hawaii, where they got married only a couple of weeks after Tammy's death. And Alex? When the police came around, he left his townhouse in Rexburg, which was conveniently located right next door to his sister Lori's, and days after the police dropped by, Alex had moved in with his girlfriend, Zulema Pastenis, in Gilbert, Arizona. In Arizona, if a person is charged with a crime, they can prevent their spouse from testifying against them, even if their spouse wants to testify. The rule is called the anti-marital fact privilege, or spousal privilege. Not saying that's what happened here, of course, but a law like that couldn't hurt if Alex was guilty of murdering those kids. The timing is especially convenient. Only days after Alex moved in, the couple took a spontaneous trip to Vegas and got married on November 29, 2019. Alex took his wife's last name, so when he died, he was actually Alex Pistenis. According to the chapel minister, he remembers that wedding because of Alex's non-traditional request to take his wife's last name. He also remembers the wedding being very fast, cold, and impersonal, with no guests there. The chapel security guard served as the witness for the marriage certificate, but Alex and Zulema didn't tell many people their happy news. Zulema's own son didn't even realize his mother and Alex were married when Alex died in front of him on his bathroom floor a little less than two weeks after they took their vows, and only one day after Tammy's body was exhumed. And on the same day he died, one of his last calls was to Chad asking for a priesthood blessing over the phone. My stars, what a tangled web of deceit, lies, and violence these people have spun. And now, Chad is pleading not guilty to the charges against him, and I guess we'll need to wait until Lori is declared mentally fit before she can enter her own plea. But considering what she's accused of doing, and what we've already heard her say up to now, we may all be waiting a very long time before the courts can call her competent with a straight face. If they are convicted, they face life in prison, and as of now, the death penalty is not off the table. And that's your recap. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. If you like getting all the crime in half the time, please subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a new recap. Until next time, take care.